Hello plant lovers, it is Matthew in Melbourne welcoming you back to my channel. I grow here in Melbourne, in Australia, cold, cool, intermediate orchids. I'm a complete amateur and I have no assistance from such things as greenhouses or humidifiers or grow lights. So if that is of any interest, do hit subscribe. I post every week on Friday. And the star of this week's epic video is this giant of the orchid world. Sarcochylus Cecilia. Cecilia. Now, as you can see, <laughs> this is a small orchid. But in fact, it is not a miniature orchid. It is a normal sized orchid. It just so happens that this is a particularly small one which has burst into bloom. And because I'm so excited about that, I'm going to make a video. So, yes, plant lovers, let us start at the very beginning, as Julie Andrews may have said by consulting the Bible of Australian orchids, Orchids of Australia, by W. H. Nichols. Now, if you are interested in Australian orchids, no matter where you are in the world, and are interested in growing them, this is a fantastic book. There are various prints and editions. It was first published in the 50s, I think. I think this edition is from the 80s. All the illustrations are botanic watercolors from the 30s. Stunning book, but it is incredibly useful about the basic information you need for species orchids such as this. So let us start at the beginning with this Sarcochylus Ceciliae, which is an Australian native orchid species type. Now we're probably all familiar with Sarcochylus. This is Sarcochylus Hartmanii, which is perhaps the most common species. As you can see, it is midsummer here in Australia, and this is not in bloom because this species is a late winter, early spring bloomer. Depends whereabouts you are and what your exact climate is, but it's an early bloomer. And what I learned from the Bible of Australian orchids is that Cecilia is a summer bloomer. In fact, let us read from the good book. Flowering period, November to January, sometimes as late as March. And we are now in January and ta-da. <laughs> there we are. The genus Sarcochylus was described in 1810, which is very early for Australian, well, for Australian anything in a European context, obviously, by a man called Robert Brown, who was one of the uh, early botanists in this country, naming things left, right and centre. And the Sarcochylus bit of the name is derived from Greek, which essentially means flesh and lip. So sort of fleshy lips, I suppose, which is actually very modern, isn't it? Uh, so that's where the name Sarcochylus comes from. And this one, Cecilia, this was named by a man called Ferdinand von Müller, and he is the guy actually who planted the botanic gardens here in Melbourne in the 19th century, and a great botanist who named and researched and grew a lot of Australian native plants. And he named this after a lady called Cecilia Vionot von Masaic, who apparently was um, an orchid enthusiast here in Australia. So she is forever remembered in the name of this little stunner, and let us refer to its growing habits in the Bible of Australian orchids, which says it is slender, leafy, rather short, often forming large clumps on rocks or trees. The other thing that is mentioned about its growth habit is that its distribution. Very important if we're learning about how to grow for such orchids in our own conditions, which is it extends from the Atherton Tablelands in northern Queensland, south as far as the Hastings River in New South Wales, seldom below 450 metres, which is 1,500 feet. So plant lovers, what we have learned is that it is a lithophyte and an epiphyte, otherwise known as opportunistic, and reasonably high altitude, comparatively, and that that geography that I just mentioned, that is basically the northeast coast of Australia. So just below the pointy bit at the top to just above Sydney, which is tropical and subtropical. And guess what? I am not in a tropical or a subtropical environment. So given its geography and that sort of temperature range, 
Melbourne is really pushing it because we can get cold, wet winters, plant lovers. Now, they don't tend to get to freezing here in Melbourne, but they can get to one or two degrees Celsius, which is, you know, 34, 36 degrees Fahrenheit, close to freezing, but not quite. Not often, but it happens. Generally, though, our winter minimum temperatures are, you know, 5 to 10 degrees centigrade, so below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Chilly for this subtropical baby, Summer, however, though, like today, for example, it is 31 degrees, which is the high 80s Fahrenheit. Um, and of course, this orchid is going to thrive in those hot temperatures, but where it comes from, much more humid than Melbourne. So it's, um, it's a bit of a game of chance, isn't it? However, I feel Sarcochylus are pretty versatile and adaptable. It's just that this one seems to have a bad rep for not being. So that temperature thing is going to be the issue. However, the ways to deal with that are in winter to keep it dry and to get nice morning direct sun. And then in summer, it can just do its thing. But it's the winter that we have to watch. As you can see, the growing and the flowering habit is, is very similar to, well, the same as its larger Hartmannii cousins. So you get basically a stem forming, not dissimilar to Vandertypes and how they grow. You have aerial roots as well as terrestrial roots, and then the flower spikes emerge from various points on the stem. And I'm presuming, like its Hartmannii cousins, the stems are long lasting and you will get flower spikes from that stem continually, year on, year on. Not from the same spot, but from the same stem. So the important thing is, with many orchids, vegetative growth to encourage the growth of the, the primary stem and then to encourage secondary stems to uh, start emerging, which according to the great book, this one will do because it will form quite large clumps. Every time I've read about Sarcochylus Ceciliae, named after Cecilia von Watsit, who is, was a great orchid collector, Every time I've read about it, people say, mm, very hard to keep alive, very tricky. So I'm thrilled and delighted that it's flowered. So firstly, this to me is a seedling. So it's not a miniature orchid, but it's not a huge orchid. But as we can see from its cousin, the Hartmannii, they can form quite vigorous uh, specimens and clumps. So you can imagine in its natural environment, it's going to colonize an area and create little sort of subplants, I suppose. So I was just a bit hesitant. Anyway, I bought this on eBay and it actually arrived in this terracotta pot, which filled my heart with joy, as you can imagine. So let's talk about some of the care that I have given this to enable it to survive thus far. Firstly then, imagine when orchids are described as lithophytes as well, I think it's important to realize that in the case of this one, it's not growing in the rock, but on the rock. So if you imagine little sort of crevices in rocks that might have a little bit of leaf litter and a little bit of moss and you know that kind of stuff, this is where that orchid would sit. And similarly on a tree it would find a little nook in the bark which might have some leaf litter or moss or something else where it would also establish itself. So not dissimilar conditions and it's not really drawing moisture from the host, whether it's rock or a tree, it's drawing moisture from the air and the litter and the moisture on the surface of the surface that it's growing on. So the other thing then, altitude which means that it can take slightly cooler nighttime temperatures because both those areas are going to be cooler at night even though they're tropical and subtropical. And seasonality of rain. So that part of Australia does have sort of rainier seasons and drier seasons that are quite warm, so a lot of evaporation, a lot of humidity. None of which bodes well for temperate slash cold Mediterranean Melbourne. So what I have done is firstly nothing. <laughs> yes, plant lovers, I didn't repot it. I simply left it in the terracotta pot that it was in. It looked quite happy. It's the right size for the plant. I didn't really think there was anything to improve on. What I can see from the potting medium, though, is that it is small to medium sized bark with quite large pieces of perlite. So it's a very light aerated mix. You know, not dissimilar to the mix that you're going to use for lots of different types of orchids. But what I have read and was told by viewers here and in other cases is that what this does not like in my climate is to be cold and wet. In fact, who does? But Cecilia certainly doesn't. So what I really focused on in winter 
was making sure that I watered it just a little, but on mornings when it was sunny and warm and slightly breezy comparatively for winter, so that it wasn't gonna be cold and wet at night. And I was quite easy with the watering during the year, but now that it's summer and it's really quite warm, I am giving it plenty of water love and it's evaporating and has lots of humidity around it. So it seems quite happy and of course it's bloomed. So it's a summer bloomer, later than its friends and cousins, such as Hartmanii here, which is a spring bloomer, and flowers, which are this beautiful sort of delicate mauvey lilac, are supposed to be fragrant. Mm, you know, I could say on the scale of one to 10, maybe 0.5 <laughs> of quite a light lavendery fragrance, perhaps when the plant's bigger, it'll smell more. Now then, in terms of light, I have this outdoors all year, but under cover so that I can really protect it from winter rain. So what it does get is quite strong morning direct light, and then it gets much more dappled light for the rest of the day. So if you imagine its native conditions, a lot of Australian orchids do have this, that they get morning sun and late afternoon sun because the eucalypts are not deciduous. So there isn't a difference generally in light from above from season to season, but the height of the sun relatively can be lower in winter, higher in summer. So a lot of Australian orchids do get more light in winter than they do in summer. So I've tried my best to replicate that. I have got it elevated, so it's quite breezy. I am really being careful with the watering and it's getting the same kind of light that its other Sarcochylae cousins are getting. And fertilizer wise, I have been not parsimonious, but I haven't been over fertilizing it. I don't think Australian orchids really respond well to huge amounts of fertilizing. So what I've been giving this is the occasional liquid feed, very, very diluted. So what I use is either a seaweed based tonic or an orchid specific liquid fertilizer. And I always dial that really down to at least one eighth of the recommended dose. And I've only been doing that in the warmer months. So spring, summer into early autumn. And then during winter, really no fertilizer and really dialing down the water anyway. So what I'm keen to do, plant lovers, is really just grow this plant on. Everyone's experience online that I've read about has been quite negative in terms of its longevity. So I bought this maybe six to eight months ago in midwinter and it is still alive. And I think perhaps getting through the winter was the most important thing. Um, so really my aim, my goal, my desire for this orchid is to keep it alive and then hopefully grow it on so that it just becomes a little bit of a bigger specimen. So I don't think naturally in its natural habitat, they're as sort of vigorous and huge as the Hartmanii types, but I do think it is a little bigger than this. So I am interested to see what you might grow up into. So there we are, plant lovers. This is perhaps my biggest thrill so far of 2022, that this little Sarcochylus Cecilia has decided to bloom and is clearly happy in its environment here. Uh, whatever I've done, which I feel is nothing, has worked. Isn't that terrible when you think, oh, I've done nothing. I have to figure out what I've not done to do it again. Anyway, I shall try and keep doing nothing to uh, establish Cecilia's ongoing health and well-being. But in the meantime, I do post every week. So if you want to hear my continuing amateur ramblings about growing cold, cool, intermediate orchids here in Melbourne, Australia, do hit subscribe and the notification bell and you will hear every Friday of my latest adventure. And so until then, I look forward to seeing you.